Hello and welcome. Today I'll be covering the processing of RTK drone photogrammetry data in Agisoft and this will be of a section of wall in an open cut mine. So the process we're going to follow is we're going to create the folders for the photos and ground control points, paste the data into those folders. And we're going to convert those photos to what grid system we're using, align the photos, import the ground control points, uh, place those ground control points in the photos, optimize the cameras, uh, build our dense cloud and we're going to trim that dense cloud to look pretty we're going to build the mesh after that uh, trim that mesh as well we're going to build the texture for the model and then we should be done so we can export it so we're going to go ahead and make a new folder whatever you want to call it what I like to do inside those folders is create a control folder and an images folder. So the control is where I drop my ground control point. Uh, my GCP will be in CSV format straight out of my uh, survey controller and the images folder will have all the images from the flight. So control A, copy all those across, paste them into the images folder. So we open up Agisoft and the first step we're going to do in workflow is add photos. Navigate to our images folder and control A, bring all those photos in, open. Jimmy my bar out the way. For the images themselves, I select all the images plus the yaw and I'm gonna convert those images into the grid system that we're using on site. That'll change my Headings to Easting Northern RL, uh, consistent with the grid system we use at work. Next step would be workflow align photos. Uh, the accuracy is going to be the highest. And I use generic pre selection. So key point limit 100,000, tie point limit 10,000. And for some reason, that actually makes quite a difference. That can add up, subtract um, hundreds of millimeters to my actual model, which is crazy. So this is the sparse cloud. It should look roughly like what you're hoping for. Um, if it looks an absolute mess at this point, um, we need to double check the accuracy of the photos that we've just brought in because at this point that's all it's using. Then we're going to import our ground control point. Our headings should be label northern easting RL. Um, those numbers correspond to those headings. If you need to change them around, you can. bring our point in and it should be sitting on the ground roughly where it should be on the model if it's not uh, you need to check the height of your control point itself um, the errors or anything that's involved in your control point and double check the photos and everything you brought in what grid system you're in so it should it should start sitting where it should be after that we're going to go through our photos and place our ground control point the images we want to use are our top-down images. When we're flying a wall, we want our ground control point within view. And when we fly it, we're going to fly some photos from above. And then we're going to fly a line of, line of photos as close as we can to the front what we're getting. We want to avoid doing all the other angles in between just because that can add some confusion and some some errors in your actual model. The best we can we're going to fly um, a couple of runs of photos across the top looking down onto all the data and then we're going to try and fly one line of photos or a couple of lines of photos directly from the front. We're going to place our ground control points in our pictures and we're going to navigate to the photos area. We only want to place our photos, uh, our ground control points in the photos that are top down. We don't want to be placing our GCPs in the photos that are facing the wall on an angle because it's going to introduce 
even more error in the uh, ground control point that we place and you can't be 100% sure that you're looking at the center of that dot. Looking top down onto the images is your best chance at seeing the, uh, the center of the ground control point a whole lot easier and getting the same spot each time in your picture. So we're going to place these ground control points, click on the first image, after that press page down, that'll skip you to the next photo uh, a bit quicker. Roughly placing these as best I can to the center of each and every one of these points, taking my time and being very diligent. Once you're happy that you have placed all of those ground control points, we're going to view the errors at the top there. We're going to check that our ground control point errors aren't too crazy. We're also going to double check the accuracy of our photos. Make sure there's no photos in there that have blown out to a meter or so. If so, remove them. Otherwise, we're looking good. We're going to go ahead and optimize the cameras. We use all of these options, but not those bottom two in general. That's going to pull all those photos into line and it should make our control point total errors uh, a whole lot better. If you're using multiple control points, it'll pull all of those errors right in. As soon as they were only using one, we're going to get to nice low errors in there. So I'm just going through here and making sure I haven't placed any ground control points in those pictures that are facing the front. I'm happy with the errors. There's an 11 mil error in the northing, but I'm not too fast about that. It should be right. Make sure you save your project before you go any further. You don't want to lose all the hard work you've done so far. Once we're happy with the ground control points and the optimizing cameras, we're going to build the dense cloud. We're doing it on medium, mild depth filtering. And that should give us plenty of data. This takes a while. I've sped everything up for demonstration purposes, but it'll get there. Once the dense cloud's done, we're going to give a whole lot more detail in our model. That dense cloud itself can be exported as a LAS file straight into Deswick as an XYZ file. We're just going to trim off all the data that isn't really important and make everything look a bit neater. On the edges of the model are uh, going to look a bit worse because we have less and less photos covering those areas. And we're going to trim out all the detail that we don't really need. Once you're happy with the dense cloud, we're going to build the mesh. We're going to use those settings there. Um, important thing being the interpolation. We don't want that because around the edges of your model, it's going to make a weird flat top area between the triangles and we just don't want that. Once the mesh is complete, we can go ahead and trim that one up as well. This is just a shaded model. It's not overly photogenic. It's not um, ultra clear, but this model itself can be put straight into Serpac or Deswick from a exporting a 3D face DXF. So again, we'll trim off all the, all the data we don't need in this model, being that we can export the dense cloud as a few different products. We can export the 3D model as different products as well. And the 3D model is what is going to be the base of your texture model or your OVJ file. 
So we're going to make the mesh nice and pretty. If there was any objects within your mesh at this point, be it vehicles, lighting plants, anything else you don't want in there, you can cut them out as a whole. Then go into your tools mesh, close holes. That'll close up your model and make sure there's no bits and pieces that you've cut out uh, remaining in there and make the surface nice and flat. I'm going to go ahead and build the texture. Uh, important thing to note is the texture size or count. Um, from memory, in, that's in multiples of 4096. So we just leave it in 16,000 and that turns out pretty good. Once your texture is finished, it should look a lot better. Um, you can zoom in there on the on some detail. This will all it'll look as good as the photos that you've taken. Um, how close you are when you've taken them, how steady the drone was when you took them. And taking your time and doing some nice steady shots is uh, always an advantage. And once you're happy with the texture, you can export that texture model out as a .obj file. That obj file can go straight into programs like Deswick, like Surpack. You can export your dense cloud as a LAS file, XYZ file. You can export your 3D model as a 3D face DXF. Save your project again once you've finished. And that should be it. If you've got any questions, queries, or doubtful points about this process, about these methods, or about these programs, chuck a comment below and I'll get back to you.